Hello, my name is Karolina Vontrova and I teach German at the University of Oxford. Today I will be talking about perspective in Friedrich Dürrenmatt's play The Besuch der Alten Dame. The title literally means the visit of an old lady, but it's usually translated as just the visit in English. Dürrenmatt was a very famous Swiss dramatist and this is probably his most famous text. It's a tragicomic play and it was written in 1956. It's one of the most famous plays in German written since the war and it's very often chosen as an A-level set text for students um, doing German in British schools. I will give you a very short summary of the play before moving on to some quotes from the play that will illustrate the importance of perspective in The Besuch der Alten Dame. So the play is about Claire Zahanassian, an enormously wealthy old woman who returns to her hometown called Gülen, which is very small and by now very dilapidated in a very bad shape. Um, and we shortly find out that she, the reason why she comes to visit Gülen is that she wants the townspeople to kill somebody called Alfred Ill, who is the man who got her pregnant and got away with it many years before. Um, we gradually find out that the way it um, unraveled was that they were both very young and Il um, was pardoned after bribing the local court um, when Clara wanted the court to prove that Il was the father of her unborn baby. And it meant that she had to le leave the town in disgrace, very young, very poor, with very bad prospects, and it took her years to turn into this incredibly wealthy, privileged woman that she now is. So when she tells the townspeople that she wants them to kill Alfred, their first um, response is no. Um, but we have a sense from the very um, first time that she raises this offer that this might change. And that's because she promises that in exchange she will donate millions to re revitalize the decrepit town. And so we get a sense that this no might change to a yes, and this is indeed what happens in the course of the play, and one of the last things that happens in the play is that Alfred Ill is indeed killed by the townspeople. So even from this uh, very short summary, I think it's quite clear that various questions about point of view or perspective are crucial in this play. So first of all, and a very important question that structures the whole play, is how the townspeople perceive Claire and Ill, who they side with and how this changes throughout the play. Another change in their perception has to do with um, the passage of time from when Claire and Ill were young um, and Claire had to leave, leave the town to um, the moment when the play takes place, when Claire comes back after many years. And a third aspect of this change of perspective has to do with the audience. So we also have to ask ourselves, how does the perception of the audience on the events of the play, and especially um, on Claire and Alfred, changes throughout the play? So having sketched out this framework of looking at the play from the perspective of perspective, as it were, I will now look at um, five different quotations that come up in different parts of the play to... Um, see in detail how these changes in perspective occur. So the first quote um, that you will now be able to see on the screen comes up towards the beginning of the play when Clem um, arrives at the train station in Gülen. And she's greeted by the ticket inspector, so the Zug Zugführer, but he's not impressed with her at all because she actually forced the train to stop at the train station to get out there. And he says, Madame, wenn Sie Gülen zu besuchen trachten, bitte steht Ihnen in Kalberstadt der 12.40 Uhr Personenzug zur Verfügung. Wie alle Welt. Ankunft in Gülen, 1.13 Uhr. So he compares Claire to other people. He uses this German phrase, um, alle Welt. So anybody, everybody. Um, and he implies that she was not allowed to do what she did because she should be treated the same way as everybody else. But this is because the Zugführer doesn't realize who Claire is. 
but very soon somebody comes up to him and whispers in his ear and he right away autocorrects as it were and comes up to her again and says Gnädige sind Frau Klärzahanasian, oh pardon, das ist natürlich etwas anderes. Die hätten selbstverständlich in Gülen gehalten, wenn die nur die leiseste Ahnung hätten and so on and so forth. And so, forth. so the key sentence here is, das ist natürlich, natürlich etwas anderes. Of course it's different in, in your case. So here we can see how very early on in the play, Claire is singled out as somebody very different than everybody else who will have this um, huge amount of influence on the life of the town. And we get a good sense of it just by looking at her interactions with the ticket inspector in the first scene when she arrives in Gülen. And then this goes on. So when she first um, um, informs the townspeople of her plea, of her mission, um, she she gets a response from the Bürgermeister, so from the mayor, um, and he completely rejects her request. So this is quote number three um, that you're seeing now. The first two lines are at the end of Claire's um, speech. Und nun will ich Gerechtigkeit, Gerechtigkeit für eine Milliarde. Um, so I now want justice, justice for a million. So is this appeal to justice, but it's always coupled with this offer of um, huge money. But what the mayor reacts to is just the money part and also just the request that she makes. He completely rejects it on moral grounds, doesn't talk about justice at all. Um, what he says and um, he's described as bleich und, und würdig, so pale and dignified. He says, Frau Zahanasian, noch sind wir in Europa, noch sind wir keine Helden, ich, äh, keine Heiden. Ich lehne im Namen der Stadt Gülen das Angebot ab, im Namen der Menschlichkeit. Liebe bleiben wir arm, denn Blut befleckt. Um, and this is met with um, ein riesiger Beifall, so huge applause. So he completely rejects the offer, and says proudly, we would rather be poor, uh, or we would rather go on being poor, than perform this crime. And the key sentence here is, Ich lehne im Namen der Stadt Gülen das Angebot ab. So he speaks the collective mind, apparently, to her. But then Claire's response is a very short line, which is at the same time one of the most memorable lines from the play. She says, Ich warte, I'll wait. And that's what she does, um, and she's right, the town changes their mind. And again, if we look at some more quotes from the play, we can see exactly how it happens um, in detail. So the next quote uh, comes slightly later in the play, where a few townspeople come to Claire to negotiate with her. And they're now much more sympathetic to her plea, but they're still refusing to do what she asks of them. But we can see that they're getting closer to accepting it. And we can clearly see how their, how their perspective changes and how they present themselves as more sympathetic to Claire and her, um, her story of what happened to her, because they pick up on this, um, on this term that she had used in the quote we, we just looked at, Gerechtigkeit, so justice. So the teacher, who speaks on behalf of the town again here, says, Frau Zahanasian, Sie sind ein verletztes, liebendes Weib. Sie verlangen absolute Gerechtigkeit. Um, interestingly, the English translation that I was using leaves out this, this sentence about justice, which I think is really important, because this is the first time in the play that the townspeople uh, take up the vocabulary that let Claire was using before, that up to this point had been completely ignored by them, so this vocabulary of justice. Um, but here we are, the sentence is not there in the English. Um, and, and the other sentence here, again, shows this very conscious change of perspective on Claire. So they describe her as a woman whose love has been wounded. 
so they portray themselves as being much more sympathetic to her and um, to this whole backstory between her and Alfred Ill, which is again not something that they engage with at all at the beginning. So we can already tell um, that uh, this crucial change in perspective is about to take place. And then Claire contributes to this um, herself when she um, tells her story to the townspeople um, at about the same time in the play. So she tells them from her point of view how her departure from Gulen uh, panned out. So let's look at this passage here. That's the last quote that I will be discussing. Es war Winter, einst, als ich dieses Städtchen verließ, im Matrosenanzug mit roten Zöpfen, hochschwanger. Einwohner grinsten mir nach. Frieren saß ich im D-Zug nach Hamburg. And so it goes on. So everything about the construction of her speech here, here um, is intended to evoke sympathy. So it's winter, she's frierend, so she's shivering. Um, she's very small and yet heavily pregnant. So there's this contrast between her wearing a matrosenanzug, a schoolgirl sailor suit, uh, and her plaits, plaits. Um, and then her being heavily pregnant, so there's this mismatch that makes the situation seem so wrong. And then to make matters worse, um, the townspeople are looking at her sniggering. So it's really interesting how she actually evokes very literally perspective and point of view. She's talking about how the people at the time were looking at her. Um, and she's telling it to the people now, uh, still asking them or requiring of them this fundamental change in how they view her. Um, so it's a very cleverly constructed little speech here. And I think at this point the audience is also invited to rethink their perspective on Claire. I think this is one of the moments in the play where we actually really start sympathizing with her. But of course at the same time we still remember about her terrible you know, terrifying ask of the townspeople to kill a man. Um, so it's one of the moments in the play when our moral judgments are called into questions and when we are asked to rethink them. So to sum up, here are some useful questions to ask about perspective in plays. Um, I think it's useful to um, gather these few questions because in many ways it's much more obvious how to talk about perspective in prose or even in poetry um, because in prose we have narrators and it's very easy to talk about narrative perspective. Uh, poetry is always seen as this very subjective art which is all about subjective perspective but then in drama I think we can also ask product productive questions about perspective um, and here are some. How is the story presented to us? How do we find out about the different elements of the story? Is the audience ever directly addressed? Is the play easy or hard to follow? Which will naturally influence how we're able to relate to the events in the play and how we perceive them. Do we get emotionally involved in the story? This again has everything to do with the question of perspective. Um, in what position um, are we placed? What is um, What point of view are we invited to adopt? in relation to the characters and events in the play. To what extent does the play resemble real life? So are we invited to um, judge this play through conventions of realism? Or is it more grotesque, for example? There are lots of moments in this play in particular where we are actually asked to suspend our expectations associated with realist conventions and sort of relish these grotesque moments. Um, do we adopt the point of view of one character? This is something that I've also been talking about um, discussing these quotes. Are we invited to side with Claire or with Alfred or with the townspeople? Um, how are our um, powers of identification distributed among all of these characters? All right, I think, um, I, I think that's all that I wanted to say and I hope that and this discussion, especially these questions, which you can apply to many other plays, will be helpful as you discuss plays with your students.